It is easy to just call the Galaxy A35 a remodeled A54, seeing that Samsung basically uses mostly the same specifications as the A54. Now, while it checks all the boxes to classify it as one, the camera specifications is where Samsung decided to hold back. And good news, no more U notch. Right off the bat, I can tell you this is a much improved device from the Galaxy A34. Now, as for whether you should upgrade from the A34 to this, that might be up to you after watching this video. We'll be answering three questions at the end of this video. Is the Samsung Galaxy A35 a good or recommendable phone? Is it a better option than the A55 or should you get the A54 instead of the A35? So let's get down to business. From merely looking at or holding the Galaxy A35, you can tell it has a better build quality than its predecessor. To be precise, aside the obvious punch hole display, we now have Gorilla Glass Victus Plus protection. On the rear, we have glass. Not sure if it's Gorilla Glass, not attempting to find out. All you need to know is that it is not glass and it can break. The A34 had a plastic back. Now, while this means we now have a more premium device, it also means it's more fragile. The Galaxy A35 is pretty much an A55 in design and build quality, except for the plastic frame instead of aluminum and Gorilla Glass Victus on the rear of the Galaxy A55. So at a glance, I can get away with calling this an A55. They have almost the same dimensions. The average consumer will naturally be curious about the difference between these two and if it isn't better to just get the A35 since it's more affordable by about $100, but I will have a separate video to compare them and answer all the questions. This video is for the A35. The Galaxy A35 has a starting price of about $350. That gets you the base version with 6 gigs of RAM and 128 gigs of storage. There is an 8 gig version with 256 gigabytes of storage. As we've come to accept from Samsung, no accessories in the box, just the phone and the cable. While you could say the A35 maintains the Samsung design language like every other of their device, the subtle improvements coming from the Galaxy A34 makes it a better device on the hands. We now have a flat frame, though still plastic but these days flat frames are the convention, and it looks and feels great here. It is not completely flat on the frame though, we have the volume and power keys in a subtle bump, I believe Samsung calls that the key island. This separates it from the S-series and the older Galaxy A-series to some extent in design if you're paying attention to the details. But it still pretty much looks like every A-series phone released this year from the A15 and upwards. That's the standard design change for the A-series this year, the key island. We get three color options for the A35, I went with the lilac or awesome lilac as Samsung calls it. Nothing much has changed display-wise compared to the A34 aside from the now punch hole display and upgraded Gorilla Glass protection. The same vibrant 6.6 inches Super AMOLED display with brightness up to 1000 nits in high brightness mode. We still get those signature bezels, which is not really a deal breaker and does not affect user experience in any way, it just happens to be the thickest on any phone around its price. But that doesn't take away the fact that it's still one of the best looking displays on any mid-range smartphone or sub-mid-range smartphone. You are not going to be noticing the bezels while using the phone. And this display quality is just the same as the Galaxy A55. No difference, same specifications. The refresh rate is 120Hz and allows for some fluidity operating the UI. Not as fluid as I like, but that's more of a one UI optimization or Exynos problem. The Samsung Galaxy A35 has clear sounding stereo speakers with good audio. The speaker grille is now a single opening just as we've seen with the A55. Typing on the A35 is great, haptics is really subtle but you are able to adjust the vibration intensity if you prefer something a bit stronger. The A35 has an on-screen fingerprint scanner which works just fine. Not the fastest but it works fine. Design-wise, processor and build quality, this is a better device than its predecessor. However, that smoothness in the UI from the A34 is not as consistent here. One UI 6.1 is fluid, but the occasional stutter and lags with animations I complained of with the A55 is even worse here. The average consumer might not see it as a problem, but this is the kind of thing that makes first-time Android users say Android is lagging when compared to iPhones. Now, we can always excuse it as a sub-mid-range Android phone, but believe me, there are more affordable phones with smoother animations in their UI. Okay, let's stop complaining. The average consumer won't care as long as it's a Samsung phone with great build quality and can take good pictures. Let it go. Moving on. The Samsung Galaxy A35 comes with Android 14, and as I've mentioned before, One UI 6.1. While not the same advanced One UI as we see on the flagships, no AI features, it is still packed with some customization features and remains one of the most reliable Android skins if you can look past the inconsistencies or 
lags in animations. You get 4 years of major upgrades which is Samsung's update policy and that gives you support up to Android 18. That is also the most you get on any mid-range Android smartphone right now. You get the One UI feature where you tap and hold on a photo to select text or cut out a subject from its background, drag and drop it anywhere. You also get Object Eraser and a couple of One UI features we love. The Galaxy A35 has a hybrid SIM slot which accepts either dual nano SIM cards or one SIM card and a micro SD card. Unlike with the A55, there is no eSIM support here. Now, I know some might go to the comments to quote GSM Arena specification page, but the phone is here and just like with the A54, it does not have eSIM. The only A series device capable of eSIM is the Galaxy A55, unless there are specific eSIM models for other regions. Definitely not for this region. Now, Exynos 1380. That is what powers the Galaxy A35. It is a decent upgrade from the MediaTek Dimensity 1080 from the A34. The Exynos 1380 also currently powers the Galaxy A54 and from the benchmark scores, you can say it's a good mid-range processor. It has seen some optimization since the A54 with more consistent performance, particularly in gaming. Now, if you saw my video on the A55, I complained of its inability to play Warzone Mobile, also not being able to play Call of Duty Mobile past low graphics. That is not a problem for the Galaxy A35. It can play high graphics titles consistently and with better heat management than I expected. Warzone Mobile plays consistently at low graphics and allows uncapped frame rates. As expected, the graphics fidelity is not the most optimized for this game, but it has no problems giving you consistent gameplay without lags as long as your internet connection is fine. Call of Duty Mobile allows you to play up to max frame rate when the graphics is set to low and very high frame rate if you prefer high graphics. PUBG Mobile is another game I tried and was able to play at HDR graphics and ultra frame rates. You get the extreme frame rate option when graphics is set to smooth. Yes, gaming on the Exynos 1380 powered Galaxy A35 is right now better than on the A55. As for whether that makes it the better value for money, I'll have a dedicated video comparing both so be sure to subscribe so you don't miss that one. The A35 has the standard 5000mAh battery and so far using it I've had no worries or issues concerning the battery, no battery drain or I'm not getting less than the expected battery life for a 5000mAh battery. It should comfortably get you at least a day of average use. Nothing has changed with the charging speed here, still 25W fast charging. You will need to purchase a compatible fast charging brick if you do not already have one. The cameras on the Galaxy A35 have changed a bit coming from the A34. We now have a 50 megapixel sensor for its main camera. The rest of the configuration remains the same. It takes pretty impressive pictures, much better than I remember with the A34, which had some inconsistencies with HDR. Those are not present here. Photos are well processed with enough detail, sharpness and accuracy with colors. Portraits come out great with near perfect subject separation, including with selfies. You might experience a little shutter lag using the cameras but nothing too serious. The A35 can record videos up to 4K 30fps from both selfie and rear cameras. There is optical image stabilization on the rear camera which works best at 1080p but is decent at 4K. The video from the rear camera does great in low light, also impressive with how it handles dynamic range. Okay, so you're looking at a video from the selfie camera of the Galaxy A35, currently filming 4K 30fps, that's the maximum you can do from the selfie camera and also from the rear camera. Uh, it's a 13 megapixel selfie camera, uh, and yeah, shooting 4K 30fps, I believe you should be able to do 1080p 60. So let me know how the video quality is, looks great from the viewfinder, uh, let's take a look at some HDR, uh, yeah. What do you think? Now, to answer the question of whether the Galaxy A35 is a recommendable phone, yes it is. Is it better than the A55? Well, not really, only in gaming for now. Should you get the Galaxy A54 instead? We are going to need a dedicated video to compare both so you see just how well they compare with each other. I'm talking about cameras, overall user experience, and I think the A35 is still currently the more affordable phone. There is no doubt that the Galaxy A35 is a solid improvement from the A34. You can choose to upgrade from the A34 and be satisfied with this one. Next, I'll be working to compare the Galaxy A55 to the A35 and also the A54. Let me know which one you want to see first. You should also check out my video on the Galaxy A35. That's all from me.